What's up everybody, FSC Trucking. Got a big video for you today. Been waiting on this for a while. We had to get a lot of stuff straightened up in the last handful of days. And let me tell you, I've been real busy. So now that we got a lot of shop work done and we got a lot of room in the shop now, we're gonna get ahead and get this video started. Come on, let's go. We gotta get Orwell fired up first because that's the key to this move. So now we got Orwell running, got that big caterpillar lit, fired, ready for life. We're not going far today though. I want to show you what we've been doing. Been trying to get a lot of shop work done. Previous videos you've seen me working on the Peterbilt, or rather the Ford, by getting the Peterbilt frame done and ready for its template. Holy smokes. I've been busy, haven't I? Now I've been trying to figure out where in here when I start working on the trucks and the chapel trailer and so on and what I'm going to do with that trailer I've been talking about you know what are we going to do here well that's where this all comes into play here so originally the Cummins that came out of the Ford was right behind the 352 cab that's basically a permanent fixture it's just too hard to move but I did manage to get the engine moved and let me tell you that was a little bit of a nightmare now both axles are out that are going under the Ford's new frame. Those are there. Those are going to have to be torn down. Take the, the, the center sections have to come out of the diffs. Those have to go to Badger for a rebuild. The axle tubes, all the brake parts, everything, the bracketry, that's all got to be sandblasted, painted to match the frame. Uh, new drums, brakes, chambers, everything new. And what isn't new is going to be, you know, redone. So that's what we got done. What I did is we made room. I shoved the Ford frame over in this, what I call bay one. The chapel trailer is gonna go over here in bay two. Now, why is that? Well, if you look, let me stand over here and I'll show you why bay two is the better bay for the big chapel trailer. We're basically sitting dead center beam of the building. This bay here is the same width as this bay except the bathroom comes in. The storeroom's over there, obviously. The bathroom comes, comes in. The bathroom comes in and it constricts the lane between this center beam and the bathroom. Also, with a tall trailer, you have to worry about this heat stack. The heater is up on top of the roof. That's the intake, that's the outlet. And it blows the air this way and that way. Even when Orwell comes in here, I have to watch and make sure the stacks don't hit the heat stack. Also, when I raise the cab up, the cab will hit the heat stack. So it has to be over here. So in reality, we're only down to maybe 10 feet wide of an area, which is fine. So if the chapel trailer comes in and basically comes around next to that heat stack, we should have about three foot clearance between the bathroom and the trailer. This bay is much wider. The only obstruction we have is the neighbor's heat outlet. That might be an inlet, I'm not really sure. But either way, this is an obstruction that stops anything tall from coming in here. But look at your door. Look how hard that it, how far close to the, the wall that is and how far away the wall is from the door. So anything big can come in and all the way in and out without any major obstruction. That's why I'm doing it like that. So this bay is for the in and out stuff. We'll start doing the work on Orwell, maybe the step deck, the RGN, whichever has to come in and out. That's the idea. So this will be shoved against the wall. This stuff's gonna get moved over because again, I have more stuff to handle. Some of this stuff's gonna wind up in storage. It's funny how it comes to the shop. It's like stuff moves from here to there to make room for the other stuff that needs to be made room for. But I've been working on it slowly but surely. Even over here, we did get some new shelves. 
and cleaned up that area. That area was always a disaster. So doing what I can, you know. I, I know I get to see a lot of comments. Where's your help? Well, the help I had was part-time help. Uh, like I said, Dave, he, uh, he had a family issue he had to take care of, a family medical issue he had to take care of. Terry works part-time. You know, he comes in the afternoon after his daytime, and Maggie's been pulling a lot of overtime doing the welding. So hopefully we'll see a return of Maggie here with the trailer coming in because I do want to get started on that too because honestly, I want to try to keep as slow as things are with the freight and revenue and so on. I want to really keep trying to push the channel because I think that's where the most growth is. Trucking wise, you just got to work your ass off and grind out and hustle. YouTube wise, you kind of got to be creative and get new stuff. And that's tr what I'm trying to do. Despite the fact I got some haters be like, oh man, you need you need to you know, be careful because you might get hurt. Yeah, that I, I drive truck for a living. I can get hurt any day. Um, I ride a motorcycle. I can get smoked just going home. Um, you know, crap just happens. So I try to mitigate the you know the risk as best as i can but in the end work's got to get done i mean that's what you do well because i have a little bit of adversity to be like oh i have to do it by myself poor me no just get done get the work done if it takes too slow then it takes too slow it's the best i can do so you do what you can I, would i love to have help yeah um money ain't there for full-time help i'm not there yet so we're working on it i also have big news regarding the frame with the ford that i'm holding on to because i made a couple phone calls yesterday and one of the phone calls was uh i might have help with the new frame when i get that done so that's another big thing hopefully we'll see it may not happen it might we'll see but i was uh I might have help coming when it comes to putting a new frame in that truck. So I can't wait for that. I really want to keep this moving. But even there, that stuff's going to be done over in Bay 1. The trailer's going to be here in Bay 2, and we'll nickel-dime piece it together as best as we can. Our oil well should be aired up. Good to go now. So let's go ahead and grab onto the chapel trailer and start getting it in. That's going to be a little dicey, though. It's not going to be as easy as one thinks. Uh, you can probably figure out why. We do have a ceiling in the shop. Thankfully, the chapel ain't that tall. But, I, you know, that's the other thing too. I probably ought to stop calling it the chapel trailer. It, uh, it's not any longer going to be a chapel trailer. And I do want to get in. I have to take all the lettering off the side. I am going to be keeping the stripes and the, the paint scheme, basically. That way people will know what it used to be. That's why I went through with this whole project, is because I wanted to keep a piece of trucking history before they all disappear. That's the reason why, if you've seen the other videos regarding the Ford, why I want it to look very close to how it always looked, because it is a piece of trucking history. But it does have to make money, too. So I want the truck and the trailer to look very similar to the way it always was. That way drivers will remember it. But we're going to repurpose this trailer for my purposes. It's going to be for my shop and my channel. We'll leave it at that. But it's going to turn into something amazing. And it's going to... I'm not going to say run the show circuit. But it's definitely going to be at truck shows. That's the plan. But it's going to be redone. So once it's inside, we're going to start peeling the lettering. Redoing the bottom. Working the interior to be more useful for us. By the way, I am going to be looking to put a diesel generator on this thing. So if any of you guys know or work with diesel generators or know a company that wants to work with a guy on a diesel generator, run that thing, uh, reach out. I was thinking before we hitch up, I probably ought to explain something about this trailer because not everybody caught the videos of me getting this. So this trailer was stationed at the TA truck stop, formerly Ken's Truck World back in the day. It's been there for 27 years until I got it. So obviously if you, if you've seen the past videos, me, Dominique, the dump truck driver, and her husband, Bobby, we got the truck out and the trailer out. Now, I had worked with the trailer, and then it was another bunch of uh, subscribers who showed up that run a trucking company out of California. Was it D&M hauling or something like that? I, I'll put it right here in the screen. But they helped out a lot, too, with getting this thing loaded on my trailer. And once, I, obviously, once we got here, we unloaded it here, so that's the thing. But let me explain a handful of problems this trailer has. Number one, the Tandems they have to come out again because those cross members are rotten and the rail that 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 the tandem slide on back and forth it's rot it's bent because of the cross member rot they're not even pinned in it's just sitting there it's squeezed in tight but the pins aren't even locked in so we do have to keep that in mind there are no brakes they are caged so the brakes are completely released so it will free roll 
and to make it even worse the dolly legs don't even crank up well they do but you can't work the crank you have to work the drive shaft in the middle and that is a royal pain so what i did is we just put it up on block so orwell should lift it up to get it up off the block so we got it back up under it with the air deflated on orwell then reinflate lift it pull the blocks and then roll it out that's the way we do it Long story short, this trailer sat at a static display for 27 years. Best we could figure, it got placed in 1998 and it got brought out in 2023. That's like 27 years-ish. So that's a long time for a truck and a trailer to sit at a static display. That's one of the big reasons I didn't do a will it start on that Cummins. I don't want to blow it up and I wasn't going to push it outside to try it. It just seemed like it got off a lot of work. We already have a cat that runs. A lot of other YouTubers do will it starts. It's just not my thing. It just, I don't want to put a lot of money in an engine just to make a video. Maybe it'll run, maybe it'll blow up, maybe it'll burn my shop down. I ah, Just pull it apart and rebuild it. I'm pretty sure we are just going to rebuild that engine, but it is in a realm of possibility. We'll repower it with a different engine. But uh, obviously when it comes to this build, we're looking for sponsorships. So we'll see how things play out between uh, different uh, companies, engine manufacturers, engine builders whichever but we'll see but right now my plan is to put that uh that cummins big cam back in it you know i'm not i prefer a cat over cummins that's for sure but i have a cummins and it'd be i gotta rebuild something i may as well rebuild something i already have that's already bought and paid for right
to cut this one and another piece of plywood right down the middle-ish. <laughs> 